Long distance maritime networks involve not only the exchange of goods but also the transfer of technology and in materials idea across different areas. This is the case of the introduction of the wheel technology in the late Bronze Age southern Italy. The wheel appeared here for the first time during the 15th century BC in the aftermath of the contacts with the Aegean. Its introduction allowed the realization of new Aegean derivative pottery classes, basically different from the traditional and made in pasto, the Italo Mycenaean, greyware, and pitoi. The innovation in the manufacturing process does not concern only the wheel, but also the use of fine calcareous clay, the painted decoration, and a more complex firing technology with the introduction of kins which allowed better control of temperature and atmosphere. The production of these classes, which represented a huge breakthrough in the pottery technology, as does involve form of technological transmission that imply contacts between Aegean and Italian potters. However, the stable or seasonal presence of Aegean potters in the Italian context is still questioned. In the frame of the late Bronze Age Mediterranean mobility, some scholars consider, especially for the palatial periods, the temporary presence of Italian artisans in Aegean workshop more likely. In those contexts, they may have learned techniques and acquired expertise then transferred back to Italy to locally produce the GM derivative classes. In any case, we can state that interaction between factors, existence of a stable context of a printing ship, and long training of local potters in workshop with Aegean artisans were absolutely necessary for the production of these classes. This presentation focus in particular on Italian recent and final Bronze Age pitoi from Broglio di Trevisace, a major Bronze Age settlement in southern Italy. The production of pitoi, due to their dimension, is technologically very demanding, requiring highly skilled and expert artisan. For this reason, it is reasonable to suggest, also for the Italian context, the existence of specific figures almost fully dedicated to the pitus manufacture and subjected to specific learning channels. Bronze Age pitoi can be typologically divided into two main groups, which correspond exactly to the recent Bronze Age and final Bronze Age phases. The first stage of the production, dated to the recent Bronze Age, is characterized by barrel-shaped specimens decorated with plain bands. Sometimes this band could show an incised pattern such as zigzag, chevron, circle, crisscross, or herring bone. During the subsequent final Bronze Age, pitoi became larger than in the previous phase and globular in shape. The decoration mainly consists of horizontal groups or bands with ribs. Other specimens show ropes or bands with impresses of incised decoration as in the previous phase. They present three or four small spiral handles attached on the rim. In the same way as recent Bronze Age and final Bronze Age specimens, differ from a typological point of view, they also display technologically differences. A detailed technological study asserting that both are made with a progressive assemblage of coils with the use of the wheel. Recent Bronze Age pitoi are made assembling large section of 20-25 cm composed internally of coils. Joints between sections are made with finger impression or with knife incision. The use of the wheel is testified by the presence of macro traces on the surfaces and in X-ray images, where alongside horizontally oriented elements there are other ones with an oblique orientation and elongated shape. On the contrary, in the final Bronze Age, pitoi, each coil is added to the previous one with the use of the wheel. The breakage mode reflects these differences in forming methods, as in the recent Bronze Age specimen, the main fractures run horizontally and are located in the joint point between the sections, where usually clay bands were put. On the contrary, final Bronze Age breaks tend to be oblique or petal-shaped. 
finger impression or knife incision are here used only to join the rim. The use of the wheel is confirmed also by the X-ray images where both voids and tempers take a preferential oblique direction. In the production of Italian pitoi, a relevant aspect is also the issues of their derivation from a GL model. Even if it is difficult to find precise parallels, Lucia Bagnetti suggested connection between a recent Bronze Age pitoi with Cretan models and between final Bronze Age pitoi with Cypriot prototypes. During the final Bronze Age, contacts with the GM decreased and then stopped, and some big changes occurred in the pocket reproduction. Italo Mycenaean and Grey were progressively stopped and they were replaced by the Notro Iapigian protogeometric ware, only rarely produced with the wheel. Pitoi, on the contrary, during this phase, increased in quantity in comparison to the earlier phase and continued to be produced with the wheel. The wheel, therefore, was extensively used only in the manufacture of vessels related to the economic management of resources and no more in the production of tableware. In this sense, what seems to be during the final Bronze Age a technological decline in the pottery production with the decrease of the fine and wheel made vessels could be considered as a convergence of specific classes connected to the new needs of the communities. It is a matter of fact that the final Bronze Age was characterized by a sharper social differentiation in comparison to the earlier phases, with the ruling elite controlling several productive and perhaps redistributive activities. During this period, indeed, storehouses for the conservation of staple within Pitoy were built for the first time in many indigenous settlements in the whole southern Italy. Uh, such, for example, in the south of Broglio di Trebisace in Calabria and Roccavecchia in Apulia. As already stated by several authors, the collapse of the Mycenaean palaces and the contraction in the contacts also implied a change in the indigenous elite behaviors and in the representation of their power. It was no longer necessary to display social status through the use of AGM style tableware that consequently were not produced anymore on large scale. If the disappearance of the Italo Mycenaean and Grey Ware can be related to the new socioeconomic context, mainly the collapse of the interconnection with the GM, the disuse of the wheel, except for Pitoi, could be explained with the fact that only a small number of wheel-using artisans attached to the indigenous elite had been active in southern Italy and devoted only to the manufacture of these classes. Given such a context of production and independently from the origin of the wheel-using potters, native or Aegean potters present in the Italian context, the ability to use the wheel was never transferred outside these groups of specialized artisans and never largely used in the production of other classes, preventing its rooting in the local potting tradition. The technological investigation of the impasto vessels carried out by Sara Levi confirms that from the Middle Bronze Age to the Early Iron Age, only very few impasto specimens were produced or refined on the wheel. Pitoi continued to be produced and used in the Wool Bronze Age to the Early Iron Age, corresponding to the new needs of the Final Bronze Age communities. The high specialization of the pitos production, its different organization modes, perhaps realized in different areas or workshop or by at least partially itinerant potters and the different apprenticeship led to the maintenance of the wheel for pito till the Iron Age. A separation between pitos makers and potters responsible for the production of other classes is still valid and visible, for example, in the workshop of the Cretan village of Trapsano, specialized in the realization of pitoi and big jars. Turning back to the Bronze Age Italy, we can thus hypothesize the presence of specialized pitos maker separated from the ones who were in charge of the production of the GM derivative wares. They could be a GM artisan and or Italian native potters that had learned these techniques working with the GM pitos makers. 
with regard to this first hypothesis, the visible changes in the shape, decorative motifs and technology between recent and final Bronze Age pottery have been to explained to a large extent in terms of local development of the production. However, it is not possible to completely reject the possibility of a relocation of Aegean potters searching for new possibilities after the collapse of the palatial system in the Aegean and Eastern Mediterranean. These artisans able to produce pitoy on the wheel to cover at least partially the local demand. The changes visible in the final Bronze Age pitoy, both in terms of shape and technology, could be linked with the routing of a newly imported ceramic tradition and, according to the hypothesis suggested by Lucia Vagnetti, we have to look to Cyprus. Anyway, it is important to underline that, independently from the origin of the wheel-using artisans, the socio-economic organization of the patron-client communities of southern Italy was compatible with the development of specialized pottery production, with the Aegean partners providing tools and input in this direction.